Have you ever thought about a lifestyle change? Maybe upsizing, downsizing, or moving into a caravan or a mobile home? Or perhaps you have thought about moving onto a narrowboat. Hello and welcome to part three of Peter's journey as a full-time narrowboater. So we st we're, as you can see we're outside because we're going to be talking about the exterior of the boat. I hope you've watched parts one and two talking about the journey so far and Peter has made some changes to the outside of the boat so I'm going to hand over to him and he's just going to talk to you about what changes he's made and I'm actually going to be filming what he's talking about. So without further ado, let's get into it. So Peter, if you would start talking about the outside of the boat. Right. Well, almost in reverse order, um, I said at the beginning that on my checklist, one of the items was to have good paint. And the, just about the one of the two things that this boat didn't have on, uh, that I, I noted when I first saw it was the paint was tired. Even the surveyor described it as tired. So it took a while to get around to it, but um, last year it was done. So we picked the boat up at the beginning of November. Uh, so it's the most obvious thing about it. I went on a water run yesterday. It's only a mile round trip. Um, and I got two compliments about the, the, the boat in that short journey. So, uh, so it's the most visible thing that's been done. So here we are, we, yes, we, we kept the, um, by the way, the tiller arm is not there because it's inside. I just didn't put that up, but we kept basically a green boat. We added this music on the back for which I got the permission of the, um, the composer uh, who lives in Norway. Um, he thought it was a very strange idea to put music on a boat. I thought, I think he first thought I was going to put the entire song. But this is the opening seven bars of a song called Victoriosa, which technically is known as Neo Tango. I can play it on my bandonian as well. <clears throat> We've gone for this decking paint in a, in a cream colour and also on the roof, which has made the boat look a lot nicer, I think. The next stage is to have the bottom done down at the waterline and below, uh, but that's neat to wait till the lockdown ends to get that done. Um, yes, so the boat's completely repainted uh, with lots of contrasting colours, so that's the most obvious thing that's been done. Um, the other things that I've done with the boat since I've had it is it's very handy when you're manoeuvring a boat to have a line attached to the center point of the boat, um, the center line. Uh, and all bolt boats have a bolt ring where you can attach these lines. Um, it makes it much easier to maneuver the boat. And because we've got solar panels on the roof, the boat came with two solar panels. I actually put a second one on. So I've got two center lines, one on each side. And when we had the paint done, we had cleats fitted on the edge, so that the rope goes into there. And that means the, the, the rope isn't getting caught up on the handrail. Uh, and these are also new ropes. So uh, we've got everything done. Uh, and we changed the name of the boat, of course, as you know, if you were watching the videos. And uh, we found this wonderful artist who did this painting. Unfortunately he did it so well that somebody did ask me if that was a photograph. <laughs> and uh, that's that's my bandonian with my hand on, on the end there. So an, another small change is we have fenders on the side and originally the fenders were tied to the handrail. Uh, and apart from the fact that it wears the paint, uh, it's tidier. The, the boat was built with these little cutouts in the 
in the deck and they are there specifically to tie fenders in. You can't quite see them now but there are little rubber fenders down there because this is a steel girder and that's the side of the boat so there are three of them down the length of the boat. And the solar panels were so useful that just over a year ago um, I had a third one added. <coughs> so these are 165 watts each uh, and the one in front is 175 watts because that's slightly newer and so it gives me just over 500 watts of solar power. Yes, so that was fitted. It, it was easy to do because we had room uh, on the roof and also the controller that manages the current, the, the current coming from the panels going into the batteries was designed to, to manage four panels, so adding a third one was, was not a problem. <clears throat> and uh, that's helped, especially since we changed the batteries uh, just about a, just over a year ago now. Uh, the other big thing was um, I was surprised that all narrowboats, even new ones, mostly have uh, single glazed windows and they quite often have what they call top hoppers. Um, this is obviously a porthole but the uh, and they, they have a, two panes and the, the top hopper would open uh, and the rectangular windows here they also had a panel a piece across there and this top piece tilted inwards to open and some people get quite heated about whether this is worth doing or not but I had all the windows changed these are double glazed units and they're uh, a whole it's a it's a whole hopper full hopper window so the whole thing tilts and um, <clears throat> and in fact you can lift them out from the inside I do it sometimes with the portholes these are a bit heavy <laughs> I first I thought I could clean the windows from the inside but actually it's more trouble than it's worth. And you can see here there's the cleats that were fitted and there's the centre ring which is holding those ropes. And the other recent thing was there was a gangplank on board and it was horrible, it was rotted and I let Flan use it but I wouldn't use it myself because I didn't think it would hold my weight. Uh, I did buy a simple scaffolding plank and use that but I got a proper mount to hold the things. So here's my barge pole and there's the gangplank uh, which I use occasionally barge pole is handy especially when it, the water's low and you get stuck somewhere. And this is a proper boat hook with a proper boat hook hook on the end and I always thought it would be useful to have one of these but since I bought it I've used it several times and it is really handy. I think it's eight feet long and a very useful addition to the boat equipment. Um, for hauling weeds out, for picking things out that you, I dropped something the other day and I managed to hook it out with uh, with the hook on the end there. Uh, <clears throat> and that's that's it there. We um, the boat came with these navigation lights um, due to a rather embarrassing incident where I lost control of the boat when I wasn't on it and it crashed into some bushes. One broke off so I've replaced the pair of them with LED lights and they're, um, they're nice in tunnels um, and when, if, if you find yourself cruising when it's getting dark you do put them on sometimes. Um, but I guess it's nice to have them. And then this is the, the new cratch. I'll just drop the side down for a moment. 
you can see we've got this flat arrangement there which gives flan access and so whichever side is the towpath we turn that flap back and uh, he can come and go as he pleases then and the person who did the cratch was uh, was very good because we had a long discussion about how how to get the cratch interior space bigger without spoiling the lines of the boat and the way we did it was we got the pieces of timber for the front frame we can walk back a little bit here this wooden frame and big G clamps to hold them in place but the the top piece was, was much longer I just moved them in and out and clamped it and then walked back 30 40 feet and looked at the lines of the boat and that way we discovered how big you could how wide you could make that top without spoiling the line of the boat so it went from five inches wide under the old cratch to 16 inches and that 11 inches does make a big difference it means we can sit side by side inside the well deck just like last week's video yes exactly yes we couldn't do that before um, and also having a single pane of glass meant that I could get the paints out and, uh, and have a go at that picture uh, I painted the whole thing at first and then I realized that we couldn't see out very well so the roof of the house is actually plain glass so Flan in particular can sit there and keep an eye on the world and then recently I've added the antenna for the for the router which has improved the signal inside and improved internet performance yes and uh, then the other improvements we made if I flip this over just to go mad completely. Can you see all right in there? I will try. Yeah. It's dark. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Right. Well, this is quite a big uh, well deck. They, they vary. You know, because boats are all different. Um, this is quite a good size, but it was completely open. There, were, there was um, no uh, lockers or seating or anything like that. So it took a long time thinking about how to fix that. I was going to have some steel lockers built and make side benches, as we see on a lot of boats. But in fact, in the end, we got a bench, a garden bench from Ikea with a rug to go over it. <clears throat> and um, just put that in there. As you can see a bucket for the ash and a grey container there for sundries but you wouldn't think looking there there's there's about 120 kilos of coal in that well deck see if you can spot where it is it's all tucked underneath that bench four sacks and a half a sack so that's given us a really useful space which is out of the rain and it's always out of the rain so I can leave things out there and I know they'll be dry when I want them uh, and you can leave wet muddy shoes or whatever and coats sometimes out there. Oh, one, of the th one of the things I bought new for the boat was uh, a little cover for the top of the chimney to keep the rain out called a rain hat. Probably we see it at the moment there isn't one because in fact when I say I bought a rain hat I think I've bought four rain hats and uh, they all fell off well one the first one vanished I had no idea what happened to that um, I fixed them on with chains and I've even had the chain break when they get knocked off and I've used a magnet to go searching for it and all I found were broken chain links <laughs> so at the moment we don't have one when I first had the boat doing that very first journey south uh, in not enough time, one of the things I found very difficult you have to miss. lose the music for a moment. 
is that, especially when it's open and it's raining, you can't put things anywhere. And I've, I was planning to put them down on the floor and then, especially like the, the, the guidebook, which tells me what to, what's coming up. So, um, Marianne had a great idea. We got this small bread box from the range, was it? And it, it is just a little bread box. We just mounted it sideways on the wall and it's it's brilliant. It holds all kinds of useful things and uh, including a mug with uh, a tea mug if I need it. And the other thing was this is the engine we call it the engine room even though the engine's actually under the floor. You can see my bicycle goes in there. But there was a big grey uh, bin, circular, well, big Plastic bucket tub. really, yes, um, full of things like windlasses and, and, and that was on the floor as well. But um, we got this rack system <clears throat> and as you can see it's quite crowded now but uh, there's, the, there's the hammer for hammering in spikes, there's the spikes and some old style hooks for hooking onto um, metal odd metal rails at the side of the canal to tie onto. There's chains for wrapping around uh, the Armco type um, canal sides that we see and a windlass, I think two windlasses there, and a grabber. I never know what those things are called, a picker. Remember, mm -hmm which um, I use for picking things up from, well, whenever, wherever. So um, that's released a lot of floor space in the, in the engine room, which is important because in fact, that floor has to come up if I want to do any maintenance on the engine. Yeah, the big yellow box down there is the inverter. And that takes the the batteries are actually under my feet at the moment. They're under this quadrant. There are, there are five of them. Um, right at the back, under under this foot, there's a black. There's a starter battery, and then there are a row of four AGM um, absorbent glass mat cells that provide all the power for the boat. And the inverter is connected to them. And when I switch it on, as it is on at the moment, that produces 230 volts AC so we can run things that uh, don't run off 12 volts. Uh, that's really useful to have. That's quite a big one. It's, um, it's rated at up to 3 kilowatts. Um, I don't have anything that needs 3 kilowatts on the boat. That's uh, because it does, it does take a lot out of the battery. Um, the microwave is the biggest current draw and it's a standard 800 watt microwave but when it's on it's taking something like 118 amps out of the batteries so we run it as little as possible <clears throat> apart from that we have all the general things the tools and brushes and a mm. folding trolley so i hope you've enjoyed the tour of the outside of the boat and watched all the improvements that Peter has made up to the boat. The boat was originally called Slow Roman and when the boat painting was done it got changed to Bandonian and there is a history with Slow Roman so if you want to check it out please do. Um, I will put the links to our videos of Slow Roman and the change to Bandonian in the links below. But it's now getting dark, as you can see. This is part three of the lifestyle change from the land to the water that Peter has made. And um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all my subscribers. And if you're new to this channel, please consider liking, subscribing and sharing this video. Do please tune in and see what's on offer for next week's video. So, until next week and next week's video, bye!